Hi, hello, Gramsci here, and welcome back to another Thick Thursday, the best source for your weekly VR news, just juicy facts and stories presented in an easily digestible way for your virtual reality needs. This week we have VR cars, some shocking meta updates, just what the heck is this device, and VR's newest lenses. There's a lot to get through this week, so let's just jump into it. There is an emerging phenomenon in the VR space right now. With the rise of exponentially more useful, logical, and pragmatic VR and AR applications, there has been a seemingly direct and immediate correlation to the automotive industry. In fact, it seems like a match made in heaven in some ways, that the technology of VR and AR seems like such a natural fit for this industry. We've seen it with Ride partnering with Audi and Microsoft's recent HoloLens partnership with Volkswagen. Ford even has an entire design process dedicated just to engineering in VR, dubbed their virtual lab. Now, as we know, Apple has also become very interested in VR lately, with news leaking around the development of their AR VR headset, but Apple is also interested in, you guessed it, cars, specifically self-driving and highly automated cars. In fact, Apple have been developing their own self-driving vehicles since 2014, but have remained pretty quiet about it since then. Of course, people have found the occasional car-related patent from Apple in the meantime, but their most recent one is, well, particularly interesting. On May 3rd, 2022, Apple filed a patent with the United States Patent and Trademark Office for an in-car VR entertainment system that utilizes the motion of the vehicle to immerse passengers in a realistic in-headset VR experience. The content the passenger experiences is synchronized with the movement and acceleration of the autonomous vehicle as it travels to the desired location, offering different location-based experiences that changes based on what their drive looks like. And this basically kind of just sounds like a different version of Holoride. However, the difference is while Holoride is partnering with Audi to create an AR VR experience, this particular VR experience is integrated directly into the car itself. Interestingly enough, this car doesn't even have windows, relying entirely on the car's exterior cameras if the user wants to take a look at the outside world. Now, don't expect this anytime soon. Most reports have this car estimated for a 2025 release, so so we still have some time, but man, I'm not going to lie, this kind of scares me a bit. Having no control over the car I'm driving is a very weird concept to me. You're going to have to really sell me on the safety side of things before I'm going to hop into one of these myself. But nonetheless, this is some really interesting emerging tech. Speaking of Apple, it is looking like we are slowly getting a much clearer picture of what Apple's up-and-coming AR VR headset is going to look like. It's always a bit difficult with Apple because they've almost always stayed completely silent on any project until they are well and ready to unveil it on their own time, leaving most to just speculate for the months or years leading up to it. What we know so far is there have been some significant delays on Apple's headset, from design troubleshooting pertaining to extreme overheating of the processing chip to political infighting in upper management. This project has been marred by delays almost from the very beginning. Now this could always change, but according to some more recent rumors and developments, it's looking like Apple's headset may have a specific focus on mixed reality and AR pass-through tech, which means this is looking like it's leaning a lot more towards a workflow orientation and being a direct competitor to Meta's future project Cambria. And this is basically par for course for Apple at this point. They've always designed tech with a workflow optimized design, so this isn't that surprising, honestly. But let's take a look at some of the things that are expected to be on this baby. Currently, as it stands, rumors in the supply chain have this headset with micro OLED displays with a focus on visual density with over 3,000 pixels per eye. It's going to be a full fledged AR device, which likely means full RGB pass through, 6DOF, and slam tracking, and 
features over a dozen different cameras across the entire headset, leading many to speculate that it's going to have basically the whole kit and caboodle. Eye tracking, face tracking, full room scale tracking, and even rumors that it'll have an outward facing screen on the front so that people in the room can see the user's eye and facial expressions during use. With all this ridiculous next gen tech packed into this thing, I know I like to meme that Apple products are expensive, but this is actually looking to be well and properly piggy bank breaking. There is absolutely no chance this headset will be less than a thousand bucks. Honestly, closer to 2k sounds more realistic at this point, but uh, these are mostly rumors. Take them with a grain of salt, and I'm sure we're going to learn more in the coming months. But now it's time for this week's Thick Snack. How far would you go to be completely immersed in VR? Well, if you plan on simulating dying from smoke inhalation any time soon, this device might just be for you. Developed by a research team at the University of Salzburg in Austria, this Quest 2 accessory essentially is a breath haptic feedback device. It tracks the user's breathing in real time so that they can play a harmonica in VR or simulate what it's like to suffer airflow restrictions during a fire. This just insanely creative VR tech that keeps being made never stops blowing my mind and just makes me even more excited for what the future of VR will look like. But now, back to the news. AR is slowly but surely becoming one-to-one -one scaled with the real world. Last week I covered a story about Niantic's insane goal of bringing real-world scaled and interoperable augmented reality to the world. Well now, surprise surprise, Google is doing it too. And this kind of makes a lot of sense for them. Something like this I imagine would already be very easy for a company with their immense influence and resources, not to mention they've already functionally had the world's most used GPS navigation system ever pretty much. With the power of their Google Maps technology, Google is planning on adding 3D elements to their up-and-coming AR glasses when they eventually become available and turning the world into a full-fledged one-to-one AR experience. While this is interesting, it honestly does feel a bit half-baked. There isn't a ton of information about exactly how this will work, like there was with Niantic's design, but invariably, the added competition should mean that we're going to get better products and faster so it's a welcome addition to the VR space for me. So one of the biggest reasons why VR headsets really for the longest time and even into the modern day have had such heavy hardware and been as bulky and physically robust as they have been is because of the lenses that we use in them. They're not small and they generally weigh a ton. For reference, the Valve Index's lenses are about 3.5 inches long, the HP Reverb G2's are almost 3 inches long, and HTC's Vive Flow has 2.1 inch displays. Well, TCL is apparently trying to do away with the age-old design of heavy and bulky optics by designing this headset with 2K resolution per eye, 120Hz high fidelity LCD pancake lenses with a wide FOV, and get this, they're only 1.77 inches long. That's less than half the length of index lenses, less than half the weight, and even more resolution to boot. Now, obviously, the other solution is to just go full micro OLED, but those displays are way more expensive than traditional LCD lenses, so for the foreseeable future, I think we're going to see LCD lenses almost exclusively on entry level to intermediate level VR headsets. Still, as a precedent, it does mean we'll have less bulky, more comfortable, and much smaller headsets in the future without having to sacrifice resolution, FOV, or clarity. But now it's time for your VR game of the week. Well, this isn't technically a VR game, it is a game in VR. The old and beloved Left 4 Dead franchise is getting a reboot with this new VR mod from user SD805. It's all the same zombie killing, action packed cooperative action you know and love from Left 4 Dead 2, but with the added charm of being able to do it in VR, and it looks surprising surprisingly well executed for a game that is 13 years old now. If you'd like to download this mod for yourself, I'll provide a link to the GitHub in the description down below. But now, back to the news. 
Well, it is looking like things are maybe not going so hot over at Meta currently. We all know about the infamous quarter one earnings call from earlier this year, and that Meta is still struggling financially with the Reality Labs division. And it's not like it's chump change either. Without making any changes at all, Meta is going to continue hemorrhaging money, so what is coming next isn't all that surprising. To start, the company has put a complete halt on any and all hiring processes, when asked by Reuters earlier this week, Andrew Bosworth, Meta's CTO, said they were preparing for significant cutbacks in its Reality Labs division, aiming to refocus on hardware and its metaverse. They went on stating that while some projects have been simply postponed, many they just cannot afford to continue on anymore and are cutting them entirely. I don't know what this means specifically for Meta, honestly. They could be making cuts anywhere. I doubt with Project Cambria so close to completion, they would cut that but I could definitely see some layoffs in Facebook or some of Meta's other projects like their AR glasses, Project Nazar. In any case, it isn't all doom and gloom with Meta. While they are facing setbacks in some areas of the company, they are definitely making progress in others. In the same session with Reuters, when asked, Bosworth apparently reaffirmed that Meta is still pushing to find options to log into Quest headsets without requiring users to maintain a Facebook account. While years ago it was implemented that that Facebook account integration was absolutely a requirement for Oculus device operation, they began receiving intense flack and backlash from consumers when they realized that if their account got deactivated or banned for any reason, they effectively had a $300 paperweight. Add to that some class action lawsuits in both Europe and America, and yeah, Meta has since then definitely fixed that particular issue, but people have still largely disliked the Facebook integration since then, and I think most people just don't want to feel forced or pressured into signing up for something they don't want when all they want is to just play their favorite games in VR. And I don't blame them for that. However, Meta's version 40 build just went live and added a slew of greatly appreciated changes for both parents and users alike. A wider range of parental control technologies have been implemented from passcode protected apps and games to access restriction and even its own spot in the Oculus app. Additionally, version 40 is rolling out some added privacy improvements with new end-to-end -end messenger and user data encryption, and finally, overall general further optimization and quality of life improvements with more audio customizability and added accessibility in settings and options. With that being implemented, it's looking like the Quest 2 is honestly becoming one of the standards for VR and one of the most robust VR headsets available currently. It has both standalone and PC VR capabilities, online play one of the largest VR game libraries available, AR pass-through, mixed reality, the list really does just go on and on. And if that wasn't enough, Meta is still selling refurbished Quest 2s on their website starting at just $250, and man, what a steal. Honestly, VR has never been more affordable than it is right now. And if you're still on the fence about getting into it or waiting for new stuff to come out, honestly, now is the time in my opinion. There's something out there for everyone, so you're pretty much guaranteed to find what you need from premier PC VR experiences to affordable standalone. But that's it. That's all the time we have this week, everyone. If you're still watching right now, I appreciate you more than you will ever know. Remember to punch that like button if you thought this video was informative. Subscribe if you would like to see more of this kind of content next week, and hit that notification bell if you just cannot stand missing out on this oh-so-sweet, dummy-thick VR news clips. I love each and every one of you beautiful feather muckers. Until next time, Gramsy out.